Hello and welcome to another Hand Drink Solo Wine Info video. Today we are discussing the La Vierge Satyricon Sangiovese 2019. And at this point there are just so many questions, like what even is a Satyricon? As it turns out, it is a work of fiction that is believed to have been written by Gaius Patronus. And Satyricon, man, it is total hashtag Manipian satire, which is of course way different from the more formal satire of geezers like Juvenal or Horace. And like, of course it is, because informal satire is just so right now. But there are still more questions like, what is a La Vierge? Well, for those of you who are familiar with medieval French, you'll know that La Vierge means the Virgin. And this is either deeply ironic or thoroughly appropriate. Those two are often quite difficult to tell apart. Because La Vierge's entire wine range is themed along a bunch of characters in various stages on their journey towards coitus, I guess. You have the seduction, Pinot Noir, the affair, Pinot Noir, the royal nymphomane Bordeaux blend, the Jezebel Chardonnay, and the last temptation Riesling. And of course, finally, you then have the apogee Pinot Noir, which is a kind of figurative climax of their three Pinot Noir ranges. In fact, it could be the literal climax. I mean, depending on how much you enjoy it. But all coital themes aside, let's talk about La Vierge as an estate. Now, La Vierge is a winery based in Himmel and Arda, uh, and the fruit comes from a farm called Babylon, and uh, it is based up on the Himmel and Arda ridge, right up on the tippy top. And of course, folk up on the top are very snooty, and they look down at the peasants in the Himmel and Arda valley because everyone knows that up on the ridge, it is colder and windier and just really a little more miserable. And we've spoken before about how grapevines are kind of like artists, right? So if you keep them cold and miserable and a little bit hungry and then give them a beautiful view, say, of the Himmel Arda Valley all the way down to the Atlantic Ocean, man, what choice do they have but to deliver some incredibly inspirational works of art? And that really is what La Vierge do with a whole bunch of their wines. But what about Himmel and Arda as an overarching region? Well, most versed wine lovers will immediately conjure up images of elegant Chardonnays and delightful Pinot Noirs because these two cultivars, these Burgundy cultivars, really serve as a double-sided calling card for the entire region of Himmel and Arda. As we've said, La Vierge have three Pinot Noirs, they have two Chardonnays, so they are very much on brand for Himmel and Arda. But you may have also noticed they have a fairly rambunctious spirit and even, dare I say, a sense of whimsy to them, which has led them to experiment with slightly less common cultivars like Sangiovese. And that brings us to this Satyricon. Now, the moment you pour yourself a glass of this, you're going to be immediately struck by the incredibly delicate color, which is way different from, say, the governo style Tuscan Sangiovese that we featured from Oro de Sani. And it becomes immediately obvious to me, looking at this, that what winemaker Christoph Kotzer has managed to do is channel that spirit of Pinot Noir from the Hill and Arda into this bottling of Sangiovese. And when you sniff it, man, the, the nose is incredible, really. It's, this is more expressive than a manic mime on meth. And, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, for a wine to be considered aromatically expressive, right, you shouldn't really need to get too close. You should be able to smell what's in there without sticking your nose into the glass because it just rushes up to greet you. Conversely, if you really have to dig your nose deep into the glass to smell anything at all, you're probably dealing with a fairly shy wine. So what can we smell? Well, I mean, usually Tuscan Sangiovese is about sour cherry and perhaps some sun-dried tomato and kind of fresh leather. And it's a, it's a fairly moody um, expression, but what I'm getting here is a little more focused and fruit driven. There's, there's strawberries, there's cherries, there's raspberry, uh, and even rose petals going on. It's quite pretty, but there are some slightly moodier sort of tomato leaf and dried Mediterranean herbs in there. And on the palate, man, the, the cherry acidity runs for days. It's like this laser-like cherry acid, this core that runs through the middle of the entire experience. But then it's couched in sweeter sort of strawberry notes that, that balance that laser-like expression. And I guess we shouldn't be surprised at this absolutely pristine acidity because 
as we said, it's a wine that's grown with a little bit of altitude in a cooler region. And talking of acidity, I would say that probably the level of acidity in this wine is, is on the cusp for a casual wine drinker. I think it's amazing. My mouth just keeps on watering. But if it's too much for you, if you find the wine to be too tart and you're experiencing kind of too much sour cherry and not enough strawberry, let the wine warm up in the glass. And what will happen is not only will you get a bigger expression of aromatics out of the glass, you'll also find those sweeter elements come to the fore. But don't try any of that until you've at least sipped it for a while at about 14 to 16 degrees. Okay, that's all for now. But if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, don't be afraid to drop a few questions below and to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date with all the cool wines coming out of South Africa. And if you're on the Hand Drink Solar website, please leave your own thoughts. I would love to hear what you think about what happens when Sangiovese manages to channel the spirit of Pinot Noir.